Here's how the Bestial engine works. Bestials are an archetype of dragon monsters based around banishing light or dark monsters from either player's graveyard to special summon themselves to the field. Usually, the effect is spell speed 1, but it becomes a quick effect when your opponent controls a monster. This lets Bestials interact with your opponent's graveyard in a very similar way to DD Crow. Each Bestial also comes with its own beneficial effect, either when on field or in the graveyard. Say Rainier is a foolish burial for branded spells, traps, and bestial monsters. Druid Swarm and Baldrake are removal for your opponent's monsters, and Magnema Hut, the best of them all, lets you search for any dragon monster during the end phase after its special summon. But as well as the regular bestial monsters, there's also the bestial monsters. These monsters aren't DD Crows, but come with their own powerful effects, with the most important one being the bestial Lubelion. Lubelion lets you search for any bestial monster, can also be used to place a branded continuous spell trap to your field. This usually grabs branded beasts for removal or branded regained for free advantage. Bestials are currently seeing play for how effective they are at countering tier limits, a strategy filled with dark monsters that have graveyard effects to fusion some of the bestials can put a stop to. As a result, the bestials you play and their ratios are very dependent on how much you want to counter tier limits, and how much the bestials synergize with your own deck. The smallest bestial package people play is 3 magma huts and 1 druid swarm. This gives you a small hand trap engine that counters tier limits without having to dedicate too much of your deck space to it. Although if you want an even bigger engine to counter tier, you can play extra copies of Jura Swarm alongside multiple copies of Serenir and or Baldrake for a maximum of 12 Bestial hand traps. But as well as the regular Bestials, some decks will choose to play 1 to 3 copies of the Bestial Lubelion. And when you're playing Lubelion, you can choose to expand your Bestial package even further to get the most amount of advantage possible from the engine by playing a copy of Branded Beast and or copies of Branded Regain. Now, let's talk about what the engine actually does, starting off with the hand traps. Every one of the regular bestial monsters is a level 6 dark dragon with 2500 attack and 2000 defense that all share one effect. This lets you target a light or dark monster in either player's graveyard and banish it so that you can special summon the bestial you activated to your field. This effect is already decently strong and can be used to deprive your opponent of some graveyard resources. But the reason why this effect is so powerful and why all the bestials have managed to see common competitive play as an effective engine is because this effect becomes a quick effect while your opponent controls a monster. This means that every regular bestial monster you play acts as a hand trap that you can use on your opponent's turn in order to interact with their graveyard, and it is currently commonly used to banish an activated tier limit monster when your opponent tries to perform a fusion summon, cutting off tier decks from some of their powerful fusion boss monsters. And their stats mean that while they're on the field, every bestial monster is a threat to your opponent, because you can either use the bestial monsters that threaten your opponent's boss monsters with the battle face to remove them from the field, or you can take advantage of the bestial typing, attribute, and level to access a ton of powerful extract pieces from Dark the Dark Charmer, or Heractic Seals, to Wallow and Beatrice. But despite all the common traits shared by the Bestials, they aren't all created equal. Magma Hut is the best out of the regular Bestials. Its unique effect triggers whenever it's special summoned, and lets you search for any dragon monster from your deck or graveyard during the end phase of the turn. The effect is a huge reason why the Bestial engine works so well. Because with Magma Hut, your hand trap lets you search for another hand trap for free, even if your Druid Swarm happens to be already in the graveyard. In fact, this search effect is so strong that Magma Hut is currently limited in the OCG, and is even considered an active detriment to have Magma Hut in your graveyard, because your opponent can use the effect of Dark the Dark Charmer to summon out your Magma Hut and turn their Bestial engine online. But Magma Hut isn't just limited to searching Bestial monsters, it can also search for any other dragon in the entire game. So a lot of decks that play powerful dragon monsters like Branded and Dragon Link will take advantage of Magma Hut as a consistency tool as well as a hand trap, so they can grab cards like Fallen of Albaz or Star Lead Seyfert. Although most decks that don't play dragons will usually use Magna Hut to search another bestial name, with the most common name being search being Bestial Druid Swarm. Druid Swarm's unique effect makes it incredibly powerful as a removal option, because whenever Druid Swarm is sent from the field to the graveyard, you get to target a special summon monster your opponent controls and send it to the graveyard, bypassing any kind of destruction protection. This means that even if your opponent isn't playing any light or dark strategies, Druid Swarm can still be an effective tool at clearing away an opponent's board, provided you can summon it to the field. Especially because, like all of the bestials, Druid Swarm's stats and typing make it a perfect body for link plays, since you can link it off and trigger its effect. The only downside to Druid Swarm is that the effect only triggers when it's sent specifically from the field to the graveyard, and so you won't be able to activate if your Druid Swarm is destroyed in hand or detached from an XC's monster. This actually contrasts with Serenir's unique effect, which triggers whenever it's sent to the graveyard by any means, and allows you to foolish any bestial monster or any branded spell or trap card. This effect is actually incredibly strong in branded decks, or decks willing to play an expanded bestial package. Because in branded decks, you can use Serenir to send a spell or trap with strong graveyard effects to the graveyard, like branded retribution in order to recur your spell and trap cards, or branded opening to protect your fusion monsters from destruction. Or in non-branded decks, by playing other bigger bestial packages, you can send the bestial Lubelion so you can summon it from the graveyard, or send branded regain so that later you can place it onto the field with branded beasts. 
But when compared to Magma Hut, Druid Swarm, and any of the other bestials, Serenir is ran the least because its effect is a lot less generically powerful. So a lot of decks that run it only really played as an alternative search of Magma Hut in case they already drew into Druid Swarm. However, come Photon Hypernova, Serenir may see even less play because of the release of Bestial Baldrake, another bestial monster with a powerful form of generic removal. Baldrake's unique effect triggers whenever your opponent summons out a Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Axes, or Link monster, whether from the extra deck, Graveyard, or Banished Pile, and lets you tribute another light or dark monster you control to banish that special summon monster. This effect can be difficult to trigger since you need to control another light or dark monster to tribute for the Baldrake, but it pairs excellently with the other bestial monsters, especially with Serenir or Druid Swarm. Because if you tribute either Serenir or Druid Swarm, not only is Baldrake removing your opponent's extra deck monster from the field, it's also triggering your other bestial graveyard effects, and will either give you a free foolish for Serenir, or another way to remove your opponent's monsters in the field with Druid Swarm. This means that on your first turn, drawing Baldrake and Druid Swarm is equivalent to four interactions by themselves. These bestial monsters all form the basis of an incredibly strong and game-warping ham trap engine that's sometimes even capable of winning games all on its own. But, if you want your bestial engine to have a stronger payoff, there are a number of non hand trap bestials and branded cards that you can play. The Bestial Lubelion is a really important card for expanded bestial packages, with three incredibly strong effects, with each one being a hard once per turn. Unlike the other bestials, Lubelion isn't a dark monster, it's a light, and it doesn't have an effect that lets you summon it out by banishing a light or dark monster. Instead, Lubelion has its own summoning condition. It must be special summoned from your hand or graveyard by tributing a level 6 or higher dark dragon monster you control, which just also happens for the criteria of every other regular bestial monster. And while it's on the field, you can place a branded continuous spell or trap card to your field for free. But Lubelion isn't useless in the hand either, as you can also discard it to search out any bestial monster from your deck to your hand, except for itself. This search effect is actually so strong that people choose to play Lubelion just so they can have easier time accessing bestial Magma Hut. You see, one of the only issues with Magma Hut as a searcher is that it can't search for other copies of itself. This means that your bestial engine isn't as recursive as it could be, but even though Magma Hut can't search for itself, it can search for bestial Lubelion. And the Bestial Lubelion can search for Magma Hut, so in a way, by playing Lubelion, your Magma Hut searches for Magma Hut. Its summoning condition is also quite strong, specifically because you can bring it out from the graveyard. This means that if you can send Lubelion to the graveyard in some way, like with Serenir's effect or Lubelion's in hand effect, you can bring it back later on in the turn to bring it onto the field. In fact, current branded Bestial decks use branded Fusion to send Lubelion from the deck to the graveyard so it can tribute their Fusion Summoned Albion to put into the graveyard for its end phase effect. And its other effect to set a branded Spell or Trap card is absolutely absurd, and gives the Bestial package an insanely strong payoff, with three different commonly played targets. Branded Regained is the strongest of the three and generates an insane amount of advantage with its two effects. The first effect is a hard once per turn, lets you draw a card if a light or dark monster is banished, as long as you place the monster at the bottom of the deck. This effect activates from every bestial hand trap, and works with your opponent's cards too. So if you banish your opponent's monster, you can put it at the bottom of their deck so that you can draw a card. This effect makes the bestials an insane advantage generator in a similar way to Decode Talk or Heat Soul, because now every turn you interact with the graveyard, you're getting a free draw. This turns Magma Hut from just a plus one in terms of card advantage into a plus three, since the bestials you can search can banish another card for another draw. But that's not all, because Regained also has another effect, where on a soft once per turn, but hard once per chain, whenever your opponent normal or special summons a monster, you can target a bestial monster in your graveyard and special summon it. This gives your bestial engine an insane amount of recursion, because you can use it to keep summoning back your copies of Magma Hut to keep searching during each end phase, or alternatively, you can even bring back Baldrake or Druusorm if you want to use their removal effects. As well as Branded Regained, you can also play Branded Beast, which, like Regained, also has two effects. Its first effect is actually an incredible form of disruption, because in the main phase, while you control a bestial monster, you can tribute a dragon monster you control to target any card your opponent controls and destroy it. This pairs really well with dragon decks that happen to play bestials, because beasts can tribute any dragon monster, letting you tribute off cards like Heratic Seals on your own turn, so you can use effect for extensions or to just send a card like Albion to the graveyard to use its effect in the end phase. All the while, getting to pop your opponent's field and deal with their potentially problematic boss monsters and floodgates. It also pairs well with the bestial monsters, because you can use beasts to tribute off a Druid Swarm or Serenir to use their graveyard effects. With Druid Swarm, you're getting to remove another one of your opponent's cards, but Serenir's effect is particularly strong synergy with Beast because of its second effect. Because during the end phase, Beast lets you place any branded continuous spell or trap card that's in your graveyard to your field face up. So with Serenir, you can send a copy of branded Regained or branded Loss, so you get access to two insanely strong cards for the price of one. Speaking of branded Loss, this also just so happens to be the third most common target for the Bestial Lubelion. While Branded Loss is face up on the field, the activation of your cards and effects that cause a fusion summon can't be negated, and when a monster is fusion summoned, your opponent can activate any cards or effects. 
It's important to note that it's specifically the activation of those cards and effects that can't be negated. So your opponent can still use Ash Blossom to negate your branded fusion, since Ash doesn't negate activation, but something like a Borolode Savage Dragon is made almost useless when branded losses on the field. Especially because your opponent isn't able to respond to the resolution of a fusion summon happening. So if you summon out a Mirror Jade and immediately activate the quick effect, that counts as being in response to the resolution of its fusion summon, allowing you to banish any one of your opponent's monsters without them being able to interact with it at all. And, like Regained, Lost has an effect which in branded decks lets them generate a ton of advantage. This one is a hard once per turn and happens whenever you fusion summon and lets you either add Fallen of Albaz or a monster that mentions Fallen of Albaz from your deck to your hand. And there are a ton of great targets for this. Fallen of Albaz is basically just super polymerization and can be used to wipe your opponent's field. Spriggan's Kit lets you search for a branded spell or trap card. And Tribrigade Mercurier is a hand trap monster to gate while you control a fusion monster that mentions Fallen of Albaz as a material. But for as strong as these effects are, you're only ever grabbing loss with Lobelion if you're playing a dedicated branded strategy. So if you're playing a rogue deck that just wants to use a big bestial package, you're better off just playing Regained or Beast. So why is this engine so strong right now? The reason why a ton of decks are dedicating a lot of space to the bestial package is because of how capable they are against the tier 0 tier limits. You see, when tier limits Merrily, Havnus, or Shireen are sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can trigger their effect to perform a fusion summon by shuffling back materials into your deck from your hand, field, or graveyard. But this effect also specifically mentions that the monster you activate has to be one of the materials you use to fusion summon. So if that monster happens to be removed from the graveyard before that fusion summon goes through, then the effect resolves without performing a fusion summon. This means that the bestials are great hand traps right now because of the way they can put a stop to tier limits' turns and potentially put a stop to this game warping strategy. But the bestials themselves are also just as game warping as tier limits, if not even more so, because of the way they pushed out a ton of light and dark strategies like Drytron and Mathmech from seeing competitive play because of how easy it is to shut their turn down with the bestial. In fact, the best rogue decks right now are ones that are capable of dodging bestials entirely, with decks like Nigeria being composed of mostly earth monsters, and decks like Sprite which can lock your opponent under Gigantic before a dark monster ever hits the graveyard. Photon Hypernova may change this, however, because tier limits get access to two different cards, which completely counter bestials and may even push them out of the format. Tier limits Catch Tira can banish whatever tier limit monster that your bestial monster targets, and because your bestial didn't banish a monster, you don't get to summon it, leaving it stranded in your hand. Then, because tier limits Catch Tira was summoned, your opponent can use this effect to mill three cards and extend even further. And the other card, which might just pacify the bestials, is Triple Tactic Tasking, a very similar card to Triple Tactic's Talents that's used to punish your opponent from activating hand traps and monster effects on your turn. But Tasking is a bit different from Talents because instead of only being able to use it if your opponent has activated monster effect during the main phase, you can use Tasking if your opponent has activated monster effect at any point during the turn. And if you use it, you can just set any normal spell or trap card to your field, but you can't use it this turn. Usually, Chillaments will use it to set Meta Noise or Infinite Impermanence, which doesn't sound that bad, but the scariest part of Tasking comes if you control a monster. Because instead of setting that normal spell or trap card, they can just add it directly to their hand and can still activate it this turn. So, if you use your Bestial Monsters to stop an opponent's fusion summon, and then summon it to your field, your opponent can then activate Tasking and add anything from instant fusion to terraforming, making it so your Bistil activation actually helped your opponent more than it hurt them. And with the release of the Cash Tira cards, a deck which doesn't play a mass amount of light and dark monsters, is focused on banishing, and trades very profitably with Bistils when they're activated, there's a very reasonable chance that these game warping cards will see a lot less play. Alright, and that's the video. If there's any other engines you'd like to see us cover next, please let us know down in the comments below.